one of the core concepts of the Roland Inspiration Centre and the reason why we chose the name very carefully is that we want it to be an inspiring space for everybody. Welcome. We are coming to you from the new Roland Inspiration Centre located in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It is our pleasure to introduce you to the next generation of plug-out synthesizer, the Roland System 8. Roland is a world leader in synthesizer instruments and technology, and the System 8 is a powerful new sound creation and performance platform for the 21st century, which, thanks to Roland's unique plug-out technology, brings forward some of the company's most famous synthesizers. Let's take our first look at the new Roland System 8 plug-out synthesizer. Amin Batia is a legend in the Canadian music scene. With over 30 years of experience scoring both television and film, he has programmed and played more synthesizers than you could care to count. A double winner of the global Roland Synthesizer Tape Contest in the 80s, his work includes working with legendaries Toto and David Foster, while his current television work includes creating the soundtrack for the hit television drama Flashpoint. Taking a break from scoring for the CBC TV drama X Company with creative partner Ari Posner, we visited with Amin at Technicolor, an amazing world famous studio in Toronto, Canada, to give him a special preview of the Roland System 8 plug out synthesizer. In this video, you will see and hear as Amin pays special attention to the new Roland 8's Jupiter 8 plug out. Let's take a look. So, I'm supposed to take a look at something? Oh, you're gonna do the magician thing and stuff like that? Oh, hello. Oh, very, very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I've never sat in a room with like eight other people while I learn a synth for the first time. This is usually a very intimate experience. Are we wired? Can I hit a button? My name is Amin Batia, and I'm a composer for film and television music. I've been doing this for 35 years and I think I was one of the first people to start using synthesizers in film and television. There's many connections to Roland and Roland has become my family. For me it began when they had their synthesizer tape competition. I was a novice then and was just experimenting with a mini Moog and a four track and uh, submitted a piece for an entry and it won first prize which you know thrilled my father who was paying a lot of money for the synthesizer but that opened the doors to all kinds of things beyond my wildest imaginations ralph dyke who was a programmer that worked for roland for many years he got my tapes to some pretty big people in los angeles including david foster and steve Percaro, and that opened doors into my album career which opened doors into my film career so it all started with that roland synthesizer tape competition it's like trying out a starship before taking it into orbit basically you want to make sure that the pink noise generators are good there we are 
I grew up listening to classical stuff. My parents had it on all the time. And for me, I wanted to create my own orchestra, but it's tough to get access to a you know, 50, 60 player orchestra on a moment's notice. So for me, it started as synthesizers being the next best thing. And so using you know, one setup and a, and a multi-track recorder, I could orchestrate and layer and build tracks. And I was my very you know, little own orchestra. As the years went by and I grew and they grew, they've become their own hybrid sound. And my favorites are when you combine acoustical sounds and synthetic sounds together. Guys, this is great. There's some really nice like overdriving analogness to this. So it's kind of like analog feel, but more like analog age. Nice. You know, when the technology is good, that's what makes it a musical instrument. The technology has to, at one point, basically just become invisible. And now this is a musical instrument. This now joins that rank. A good musical instrument inspires you to write. That's, that's the litmus test for me. Good. Those are my old trill tricks, which I've really missed being able to do. Now, how quickly can I put velocity sensitivity on that? Thank you. Just to have direct control over the velocity sensitivity alone, for me as an orchestral guy, that's a biggie. It's neat that new composers and new performers are starting to dig up all those sounds from the 70s and the 80s that we used to work with all the time. So all of that stuff is coming back. The fact that with a press of a button, I'm now into a Jupiter 8, uh, I think that's huge. The plug out technology, that's excellent because I don't want to take up more resources on my computer. So to be able to have a piece of hardware that I can also control from computer should I want to, but then to be able to take it out and take it on the road, I think the plug out, I think you're onto a really good thing. The Jupiter 8 was the first polyphonic synth I ever played. It was, I've been working with mini mugs, I've been working with all kinds of other things. And then for the first time to actually play a chord, it was like, chords, I don't have to overdub anything. So, but in this particular case, the effect is here, so we can actually still do overdrive effects on a Jupiter 8. This is cool. This is like all the analog stuff I've been missing brought back. Software synthesizers are great, and I use them in my film work because of film deadlines, I've got to quickly just call up a patch. But when you get that time to actually create sound design, to actually create a sound that is yours and is your personality, there is no substitute for any kind of hardware. But when synthesis first started, you had to quickly get access to the most important parts of the sound making process. So you have your oscillators, you have your filters, you have your mixer, you have your amplifier, and now, on this thing, you've got effects and chorus and reverb. So to quickly take a sound and shape it into something else is, is crucial. Because I think in this day and age, the type of sound you create is just as important as the type of melodies that you're writing. You know, melody's not enough now. Even rhythm's not enough. It's, it's how those spectral combinations all come together. So, uh, so don't use presets. By understanding the personality of something and having an image in, in your mind, in your, you know, in your mind's ear of what you want to create, and then using all of these tools and all of these instruments to get there, to me, that's the joy. I love spending hours with this thing. So that's all I ask now that this is all done. Just leave me alone, let me just play with her, get to know her, and we can become friends. Okay, bye-bye. John Limesider has been playing, modifying, and repairing synthesizers for over 30 years. In fact, few outside of Roland know the inside of a Roland better than John. John has a deep appreciation for music and sound technology old and new, so he seemed the perfect choice for us to preview the new Roland System 8. In the following video, John meets the Roland System 8 for the first time and also tells us a great story about the time Michael Jackson's synth player called. My name is John Limesider. I've been at National Music Center 
for 14 years, and now that we've moved to a new location at Studio Bell, I've been repairing instruments for over 35 years, and one of the instruments we're talking about is the Jupiter 8. I was doing those under warranty when they were brand new. One of the stories I can tell you is that one day I was working at the shop and I got a call from the Cardish company for a very well-known synthesis. I said, I've got an emergency. I'm at the studio doing a Michael Jackson session and the Jupiter 8 just died. I said, okay, we'll bring it by, we'll take care of it. About half an hour later, I got a call from another guy, for another synth guy. I said, hey, I'm at the studio with Michael Jackson. My Jupiter 8 just died. Three separate Jupiter 8s came in the same day and then like 45 minutes, all in the same session. There was nothing wrong with them. The power at the studio was running about 105 volts. And none of them were working 105 volts. They needed 110. But the studio was just running really low, and all of them were locking up that day. And all for Michael Jackson. Different keyboard players working with him on the same studio. Obviously, program storage is important. I think the vast majority wants some kind of, at least some kind of a step sequencer, which is, again, a tremendously useful tool. And to have choices. Ergonomics are just as important as the sound. If it sounds great but you can't do anything on it, it's pretty well useless to me. The idea is to get all the advantages an instrument like the Jupiter E had without the flaws and just add to the versatility. I don't really want to look at instruments. I want to hear instruments and play instruments. And I think that just looking at them is sort of missing the point. The point is the sounds, and when someone wants to be an artist, they want every color that they can get. All these great old instruments, there's a reason why people still crave certain old instruments, because they are different, and they have been, and each, it's not like every old instrument was the same. They were each unique, and provided things nothing else did. And I love, I mean, I'm an analog freak, but I also have a ton of digital instruments. I really like them because they do different things. And I don't think you should eliminate any of them based on the technology. It's, it's again, it's about music. And does it do a sound that you hear in your head? How can I get that sound? Well, here's a way to do it. And here's another way to get something similar. Here's another way. And I think if you embrace all of them, you're much better off as a musician. Born in Zimbabwe and hailing from Toronto, Jason Am is a well-known electronic musician and historian. Recording and performing as solvent, Jason's genre-defying music combines catchy melodies with synthesizers, vocoders, and drum machines in a uniquely memorable way. Jason's own label, Section Records, hosts nine solvent album and EP releases, including 2014's New Ways, music from the acclaimed modular synth documentary, I Dream of Wires, which Jason also served as producer for. Given his passion for modular synthesizers, Jason Ahm seemed the perfect candidate for us to preview a unique application of the Roland System 8. Its ability to sync with modern instruments and computers, plus modular analog synths and effects, both old and new. Let's take a look as Jason Ahm performs on the Roland System 8. I like the raw sound of the System 8. It definitely has a nice, basic, raw analog tone to it. In this performance, I wanted to integrate some of my external gear with it because, I mean, to me, that's the nature of using modular gear, is to cross-patch between everything.
And I really liked having the modular stuff you know, built right into the back. It really encouraged me to try running the sound from the System 8 into the modules for additional processing. The combination of the two I found really interesting. The Jupiter 8 was definitely the synth part that I gravitated towards with the System 8. You know, I have a long history with using Roland Jupiter synths, so I immediately pressed that Jupiter 8 button and uh, yeah, I wasn't disappointed. It sounds really cool. I mean, I like the concept, you know, I have a bunch of Roland analog synths. It's kind of nice to think that, uh, you know, you can just load in all the different synths that I've been familiar with over the years. I was using the built-in sequencer on the System 8, which was really nice. Yeah, I really liked experimenting with that thing and I found it very instant to figure out. I mean, I know with a lot of sort of built-in sequencers, they're sort of complicated. This thing, I just figured it out in a second. So I mean, there's so many different ways that you could integrate a system like this into a full studio, but I like that, you know, I can cross-patch it with my modular, cross-patch it with some of my vintage semi-modular synths, like I actually was using uh, one of the outs on my vintage system 100 and uh, taking like a VCO out from that and patching it into this system. You know, there's no limit to the possibilities how you can integrate a system like this into an analog studio. Thank you to Amin Batia, John Limesider, and Jason Alm for sharing with us your first impressions of the Roland System 8 plug-out synthesizer. And thank you to everyone watching for joining us from the new Roland Inspiration Centre, Toronto.